What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, I'm going to talk you through some of the best tools for bending objects in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we're going to use extensions to do most of these things. There's not really a bending function built into the native version of SketchUp. And so there's a few different extensions I want to talk about that can do this. So the first one is ShapeBender. So you've probably heard of ShapeBender before. And by the way, I'll link to more in-depth tutorials about all of these in the notes below the video. But you've probably heard about this before. And basically what this is is a tool that you can download from the SketchUp extension warehouse. So you would just go into the extension warehouse and just look for shape bender. And it's going to be CLF shape bender right here. And basically what this tool does is it allows you to select an object and then you activate the tool. And what you need is you need a baseline that runs along the red axis and then a curve like this. And you can get more complex with this. We'll talk about that in a second, but you activate the, you select the object you want to bend, you activate shape bender, and then you click on this line and then you click on this line right here. And what that's going to do is that's going to use this line as like a target and it's going to bend your object along the curve. Now, one thing to be aware of with this, well, two things, I guess. First, you can toggle the direction this curves with the up arrow. But second, the distance from your baseline is going to affect the distance of your curve as well. So if you want this to follow a little closer, what you need to do is cancel this and you would want to move this so that it aligns with that line right there. But then if we activated this and we do a shape bender, line, line, and hit the enter key, that's going to allow you to bend this along a surface like this. And so this is going to work for more complex shapes as well. So I've got these series of, um, these series of steps right here. Well, what I've got is I've got a few arcs that I want to bend this along. And so we've got a series of rectangles in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over and align it with this edge, but then I'm going to use shape bender in order to do this. Now, one thing to be aware of with this is you might get a little bit of overlap right here. This is not an error on shape benders part. It's how do you bend this along this curve, right? with this tiny little radius that's in here. So that is one thing to be aware of is um, it's not going to work quite as well um, with those kind of interior curves like this. Now, if it was something smaller like this, so now if we were to run it, you're not gonna have any issues now because these don't extend out far enough to overlap with each other. So just kind of be aware of that. But there are a lot of cool applications for this tool. So we could do the same thing right here with this edge and this curve, and we could use it to bend this fence along this curve. Now, I usually use shape bender when I have some kind of a complex path that I want to take objects and bend them along. So um, the simple curve you can definitely do. There are some other tools that work for that, which we'll talk about in a second. But um, anytime I've got a more complex path with multiple curves or something like that, this seems like a good tool. Okay, so next up, we've got a tool from TomTom. And this tool is also available for free. It's in the SketchUp extension warehouse and it's called TrueBend, one word. And so TrueBend does a little bit better job of maintaining the original length of the segment. So it's really focused on slicing this object up but keeping the length of the whole thing. So instead of you trying to draw a path that's exactly the same, this one allows you to pick a direction and then you can use this in order to bend the object along a certain number of degrees. So whenever I want to bend something like 360 degrees, this is usually a tool that I use. But basically the way that TrueBend works is you activate TrueBend and what it's going to do is it's going to bend the object like this. So what we can do is we can take this and we can pull on it right here or we can type in a value. So if I was to type in a value of 180 and hit the enter key, that's going to bend this exactly along 180 degrees. So this is really valuable when you need something that's going to be flat on the end. Uh, this one does a better job of doing that. Now, um, you can also do 360 degrees. I think this might be the only one that really does the 360 degrees really well. So if you want to bend something like that, this is a great tool for that. Now, one thing to be aware of with this tool, and this is probably a bad example, but this uses the object axis in order to set what direction things are going to bend. So for example, if I was to adjust this object right here and I was to adjust the axes, so that they're facing a different direction. So say I was to place these right here, and instead of having my red facing this way, I had it facing this way, that's going to change the way the object bends. So what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. But notice how if I activate this tool, it's going to bend it in this direction. But with this exact same object, notice how it's going to bend it in a different direction because I chain the, changed the axis direction. So if you ever get this in here and it's not bending things the way that you want them to be bent, you might wanna think about changing the direction the axes are facing. But this is a really great tool for creating these things that are exactly 180 degrees or exactly 360 degrees. All right, so next up, we've got a tool called Fredo Scale. And I've talked about Fredo Scale a bunch in the past, um, but what Fredo Scale does, and this one you download from Sketchication, you don't download from a, you don't download it from the SketchUp extension warehouse, but Fredo Scale has a bunch of different tools inside of it for doing a bunch of different things. So let's activate Fredo Scale. And so Fredo Scale is basically a whole new scaling tool set for SketchUp, right? So this allows you to do things like uh, you can do box rotation, you can set objects to twists, other things like that. But specifically in this video, we wanna focus on the radial bending. All right, so radial bend is a little bit different because it allows you to set where the bend occurs, right? So what I can do is I can come in here and let's say we wanted to bend this sideways. So I'm gonna pick this central point right here, but I'm gonna pick a direction and how far this goes. But then I'm gonna set a target point and notice how this one is going to bend only up until that point that I set, right? So what this does is this allows me to come in here with an object and I can set like a reference point right here. I can set a direction and then a target point, but this is going to allow me to bend my object based on points that I set. This is super valuable for a lot of different things, but this is the only one that really allows you to set the radius in that way and bend objects that way. And that can get really interesting. Now you could come in here and do the same thing we did with true bend, right? So if we wanted to take this fence, for example, and bend it 180 degrees, you can definitely do that, though I find, uh, again, for bending something like that, I find true bend to be a little bit better. But the real value in here is you can set how far along your object the bend starts. So for example, say I wanted to bend half of this, I could set this point, this point, and then type in a value of 90 degrees and that allows me to bend a portion of this. So if you need to bend a portion of this and you don't wanna deal with uh, paths and shape bender, um, Fredo Scale's radial bend tool is a great tool for that. Now note that this is the only paid extension on this list. I personally find it to be 100% worth it, um, but that's kind of up to you. And then finally, let's say that we wanted to take something and instead of bending it, we wanted to form it. So let's say we had a panel like this one right? Well, we can use the free extension Flowify, which you can find in the SketchUp extension warehouse under Flowify. But basically the way that this tool works is um, you set a surface, you set target edges, and then you set a base surface, and then you have an object on top of that. And what you do is you group them together. The grouping is really important. So if you look at this, I have a group with three groups inside of it, and I'm going to hide this for a second. So basically what I've got is I've got a target mesh. I've got a group of two lines that run from one corner to the other corner, and I have those grouped. And then I have the base face right here. And those are all in a group. And basically what this tool is gonna do is this is gonna figure out a grid along this object. It's gonna slice your object up and it's going to deform it along the surface. And note that it only works on target surfaces that have four corners. But if I was to do an unhide all, and I was to select this surface and this object, you just use extensions, flowify, flowify, and it's going to bend or deform that object to follow along that surface. Now, one thing to be aware of is you might get this kind of ugly geometry in here. All you have to do is just right click and do a soften smooth edges, and you can use the soften smooth tool in order to get rid of that, in order to get the smooth result. This will work for a lot of things. You could use this for like perforated panels or other things like that. You do have to be a little bit careful because you might lose. I'm not sure if the deformation is something that you could actually send to like a different tool, like a CNC tool or anything like that, but you can use it at least in order to visually do this. You can also create some really interesting effects with 3D objects. So for example, if I wanted to bend these so that they follow along the surface, I could use Flowify in order to do that. And then we can go ahead and hide this. 
And then we could use the soften smooth tool in order to clean this up. And depending on how your mesh looks, you may have to do a little bit of manual cleanup in here, but it's still kind of fun being able to take those objects and deform them along the surface. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about these extensions and which one you use the most. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.